So this video is a departure from my normal C++ videos, but hopefully you guys will find it beneficial nonetheless. So the people that watch my videos may want to go and check out Udacity.com. That's the web page that I have brought up right now. If you haven't heard about uh, Udacity, it's a company that wants to provide high quality university level education for free to anyone that basically has a decent internet connection. They say low cost here on their website, but as it is right now, it's completely free. Also right now they only have uh, computing videos, so topics related to computer science and computing, but they may offer other topics in the future. I don't think they've rolled that out. So right now I'm enrolled in their CS 101 course, which is called Building a Search Engine. And this class really just teaches you the basics of computing, programming, how to go about solving problems in general. And each, each course is seven weeks in duration, so I think they're, we're now on the fourth week of the CS 101 course. And after the fourth week, you'll have actually built the core parts of a search engine. Uh, as you can see, they also have several other courses that they're currently offering or will be offering soon. So the two courses that they're offering right now is the CS 101 Building a Search Engine course and the CS 373, which is on programming a robotic car. But the other courses that they have listed here, design of computer programs, web application engineering, programming languages, and applied cryptography, they're going to be offering those uh, April 16th, in addition to offering the CS 101 and 373 uh, course again starting in April. So I think their intentions is to offer these courses and add additional courses every eight weeks. So the courses are designed in units, so you do one unit per week. And with each unit, there's a set of video lessons and embedded quizzes. And you also have homework exercises to complete that are related to each unit. There's also a final exam for each course. And if you satisfactorily complete the final exam in the course, then you'll receive a certificate. So you can still enroll in the uh, two courses that are being offered now, the 101 course and the 373 course. Uh, these courses are going to be offered again, as I said before, April 16th, along with the other courses. So the CS 101 course that uses and teaches the Python language, which is a great language for learning how to think about programs and much less complex than the C++ language that we use right now on the real learning side. So why am I telling you all this? Uh, because I think it's a pretty awesome thing and also won't have much time to do my own videos until May. Uh, if you're wondering if I have any affiliation with Udacity, I do not, other than being enrolled along with about, I think, 90 other thousand people. I'm not really sure of the exact number, but that's a number I heard quoted recently. So for, the, for those that are interested in taking the CS101 course or any of the other courses, you may want to download uh, a Python integrated development environment uh, so that you can go about debugging your programs. So the page that I brought up here is on uh, PyScriptor, so it's code.google.com forward slash p forward slash PyScriptor. This is only for the Windows environment, so if you're on a Mac or a Linux system, you probably already have um, a Python interpreter installed that you can bring up and make use of. Uh, it may not be an integrated development environment, but for all those that are using Windows, I definitely recommend PyScriptor. Since it's a fairly lightweight IDE, uh, I think it's about five megabytes in size. And it's also really you know, lightweight in the sense of the resources, so it doesn't use much in the way of memory. It starts up really fast. So if you go to the uh, download section here, you can see a listing of executable files or the zip files that they have. They have the 64-bit version here and the 32-bit version here. I just downloaded the 32-bit version. You can see that they're fairly small in size, so the 32-bit version is only 4.4 megabytes. Uh, what else did I want to say? So once you've downloaded and installed PyScriptor, you shouldn't have any installation difficulties, hopefully. Go ahead and launch it, and we'll take a look at the editor and the debugger. OK, so now that you have PyScriptor installed and launched, I mainly just want to show you the concepts of the debugger and show you how to run the debugger in PyScriptor. So I won't exhaustively be going through the details of Python syntax. I may mention a few things here and there, but mostly this is just about using the debugger in PyScriptor. So whenever you load up PyScriptor, you should get something that looks similar to what I have on the screen now. You'll see that you have this def main and then pass and then if name main main. So all this stuff here is basically designed for if you want to have this program set up either as a standalone application or whether it's going to be imported as a resource as part of some other program. So don't worry too much about this. So a debugger is usually one of the major 
components of an integrated development environment. And what a debugger allows you to do is interactively go through a program line by line and examine the contents of variables, trace the flow of control. So it really aids you in actually figuring out what logic errors you may have in your program or potential runtime errors as well. So let's write a uh, function here that will have two inputs, a uh, word and a character, and we'll simply return the number of instances of that character in the word. So I may make mistakes in here on purpose, but uh, that's okay. Hopefully we can use the debugger to, to figure out what mistakes we may have. So we're going to define a, a function here called count characters. And you can see that as I start typing that the PyScript or autocompletion automatically takes into effect. If you're not interested in having that autocompletion pop up, you can go to uh, Tools, Options, IDE Options, and then select, well, there's a lot of different options here for code completion. Uh, one of the ones that may be annoying to you is that it will automatically try to complete something as you type. If you want to turn that off, you can deselect this complete as you type. So count characters, and it's going to have two parameters. One is going to be a word, and the other one's going to be just a character. So these are just the, the variable names there being passed in. And we'll uh, create another variable called count that will keep a count of the number of times we see a particular character in the word. And we'll s use our little for loop here, and we'll say uh, for C, so some character C in word. So for each character in the word is really what we're saying there. We want to check to see if that character is equal to the thing that we passed in in the variable ch. Okay, so the c here is just basically iterating over every single character in this word. And if that turns out to be the case, then we'll increment our count. So we'll increment our count by one, and then down here we'll just simply return the value of count. So down below here, we'll create a variable s and assign the string hello to it. And then we'll create another variable called ch, and we'll have the variable, or the string l in this case. So let's go ahead and print out what the result would be if we called count characters with s and ch, and see what happens. So as we, if we run this, so the way to run the program is just to click on this green button here, which I did previously. And we can see here on the console output down here at the bottom that the value is 0. And we would expect to see the value of 2. And most of you probably already picked up what the mistake is here. But just for completeness and learning how to use the debugger, uh, let's go in and interactively go through this, this function that we wrote called count characters. So what am I going to do is place a breakpoint uh, what we call a breakpoint, which is basically a halting or pausing point in our program. And I can place it really anywhere in our program. Maybe I want to place it on this line here where we have this print statement. So I just left clicked right to the left of that print statement, and it should make a little red circle, uh, red circle with a green check mark there. And the way you go about launching the debugger, instead of clicking on the green arrow here, the green play button, uh, you would click on the button to the right of that. You could also click on F9. So if I click on that, it will launch the debugger. And you'll notice here that our program hasn't completed execution. It actually halted execution there where we placed that breakpoint. And at this point, I can actually do what is called a step into operation. So I, I can actually step into this function called count cares. So the way you do that, if you look on the toolbar here, to the right of the debug button, we have a couple of buttons here, run to cursor, step into subroutine, step over next function call, and step out of current subroutine. So what we want to do is actually step into our, our subroutine. It was the case that we had additional code below this particular line, and we weren't interested in interactively st stepping through line by line to the count cares function then we could just do step over. In our case, we actually want to do a step into. So I'll do a step into. And you can see now that we're here inside of the count cares function. And I'll start stepping through that. And you can see, if we go over here uh, below the console window, you have various tabs here at the bottom. And one of those tabs is called variables. So you can see these variables here, uh, ch. So that was has the value of l that was passed in. And we can see that that's a string. And we also had word, which has uh, hello, and it's also a string. So it's pretty powerful to be able to see 
what the various variables are, what the types of them are, and what their current values are. So if I do a step over operation here, or click on F8, you will see that now we have the variable count, and it's an int type, and it has the value of zero. And so now we'll start stepping through this for loop and checking to see if these element C, which in the first, the very first iteration of this for loop has the value of H, and we're checking to see if it's equal to CH. So is H H equal to L? Obviously not. So it will not get inside this if statement, and we will just go back into the for loop again, the next iteration, where it picks up the character E. So now we're comparing E to L. So you can see that we're just moving through this for loop, and finally we get to an L. L is equal to L, so we'll step in there and increment the value of count. But you can see that count did not get incremented. That's where we made our logic error in this particular case. So we really needed to have count assignment statement count plus one as opposed to just doing count plus one. Uh, so you could continue going through this and see that it finally completes going through the word and it returns the value of count and then it's going to print that out. If you want to go back to what the uh, Python console interpreter is printing out, you can click on Python interpreter and it shows that value of zero. We finished execution of this particular program. What we can do now is actually go in and modify it. So we'll do count assignment statement count plus one. And this time if we were to run the program straight out, we should see the value of two being printed out on the console. It turns out if you leave a breakpoint in there and you're not launching the debugger, it's just going to ignore the breakpoint. But if you were to launch the debugger again, then it would go and halt execution on that breakpoint. If you're interested in, in, in stopping execution of your Python program at any point in time, then you can click on the abort debugging button here, uh, which is like a red block. The other thing I was going to mention is the we, we really don't even have to use uh, or write a function called count cares. There's actually a function built in to the Python library that we could make use of. So we could have just said s dot. And the nice thing about PyScript or the integrated development environment we're using here is it has this automatic code completion. So all we're doing here is seeing a listing of methods associated with strings. And one of the methods or functions that it has is this count function. So I can select that and then specify as an argument to that some particular character. So if we were to run this again, well, let me actually do a print statement. So do print that and run it. And you can see it prints out the value of two as well. Uh, it's a little actually a little bit more robust than our count cares. You could you could actually pass in say uh, he, so it's not just simply a, a single character. It's just a substring or a sh uh, string. It doesn't have to necessarily be a substring. But if we were to run this now, you can see that our count cares returns zero because it's just simply examining a character at a time, whereas the count function that's built into Python actually returns one, which is the number of times we see the substring HE. So that's pretty much it in terms of using the debugger. We looked at uh, how to go about doing a, a step in operation. I mentioned the step out or step over operation, so you can play around with those, and just being able to launch the debugger and using breakpoints.